we are going to be implementing the search that we created on the back end and we're going to call that in our app. So I have the app open right over here and we can see all the mock data that we created before and it's pretty colorful with the images that we have now. And the page that generates that in the app is called Find Listings Connector and we can see we're, we're just mapping through the listings and rendering these cards. Now, the, to get this data, we're calling find listings. So what we're going to do is replace that because I want to turn this page into a searchable page. So we're going to have to create a search controller, um, use that here, and then we're going to go from there. So we're going to start by touching some stuff in the controller or adding a folder. And I'm going to call this search listings. And I'm going to create an index file in there. And then for this, I'm going to model it after the view listing one. So I'm going to copy that and paste it in. And then we're going to go through the usual routine of um, changing the query here and then generating the types. So the query that we want here is the search listings one. I'm just going to copy that and we're going to do query and we can do the same thing here. And I'm going to do an uppercase S there. And this is going to be our query, search listings, and then we can pass in our variables. So the first variable is going to be an input. Now the type of this is special. We're using a custom input type, so we can actually use that um, over here as well. And the two other types are offset and limit, which are both, we can copy those, those are both ints. And then limit, which is an int as well. So now over here, we can pass in these. So I'm going to say dollars, or I guess just input is equal to dollar sign input. And we're going to do the same for offset and limit. And now here we can grab anything we want from the listings. This looks like all the information that we're going to want and need, so we'll keep that. And now I'm going to save this. We have our query, so now we can generate the types. I'm going to say yarn gen types. And let's see if it likes it. It does, generates the type it looks like. And I can go over here, click on that to look at the types and refresh TypeScript. So now I'm going to call this with search listings. And we'll talk about what this, this listing is going to be in a second. Let's come back over here. Um, and let's fill out this, so search listings. So this is the component that we're going to uh, allow the app to use. So this is going to use the query component, and here we're going to replace uh, the types. So we want to use search listings query and search listing variables. And this should be capital S there. And re-import that. Did I mess that up? So I want search listings query. Um, so I don't want this. I want search listings query, but it has it as a lowercase. Um, that's odd. So it doesn't look like it's auto-completing for me. And what I want is search listings query, but without the variable. So I'm just going to search if it exists here. Yeah, it's right here. Um, so I'm just going to just manually import it then. So paste it at the top. Get rid of those because we're not going to use them anymore and then use that, so perfect. So now the query is the one we just created up there, so that's gonna be search listing. Uh, variables that we're gonna pass in, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna take the variables as a prop. So then I need to grab this type, and that's what I'm gonna take as a prop here. So instead of a listing ID, I'm gonna say variables. So whoever uses this component now has to pass in a prop called variables, and it's going to have to include all the search listing query variables, which include the ones we passed here, so input, offset, limit. Um, and then here, so this is now, uh, what we're going to return is uh, not the view listing view listings, but the search listing, and get the, the listings from that, so that's what it's going to be. Um, and instead of a listing, it's going to be listings plural. So this is going to be an array. So if I hover or I click on this, I just want to see. So this is just an object. So we need to turn this into an array. So let's do that. 
and we're not going to return null. So then here, I'm going to say listings, and this is going to be plural with an S. Okay, I added that there too. So then here, I'm going to say the same thing. So the search listing, make that a array. And then here, that's what I'm going to set. So if we get the data for the search listing, I'm going to set that there. And there we go. And then this is what we're going to pass to the children and have access to. So next we want to just export this in our index file. So I'm going to export search listings. And in our controller now I can build. And now we'll be able to use this in our app. Now my app just crashed, but I think I can reload it. And there we go. And now in my app over here, I can use our search listing higher order component. So how we were doing this before, or sorry, we just made that a render prop on a higher order component. We're gonna replace this higher order component. So we're exporting down here. I'm gonna move that up here. So I'm gonna say export and I'm gonna copy the name. Since we're not using a higher order component here anymore, and I can just remove that down there. And we can get rid of that. We're not going to take any props in here. And so we're not going to do anything there. So now our scroll view, I'm going to say uh, search listings. And I'm going to put the end tag below here. And now we have to turn this into an object. And actually, I think what I want to do is return um, something slightly different from our... Um, our rendered prop, but we'll fix that in a second. All right, so now I turn that into a function and now we just need to pass in the props up here. So the first one we need to pass into is variables and I think that's pretty much the only thing we need to pass in. So I'm gonna pass in the input, which should be an object and then put here, um, oh, and you put an extra curly brace there. So we actually pass in an object, there we go. Input, we can pass in beds, guests, names. So let's get everything that has a bed of one. Um, so the other the other variables we need to pass in here, oops, is the limit. I'm going to say give me five, and the offset is going to be zero. So I'm just hard coding this right now. That way I can see the re return values, and then we're going to add variables to actually be able to search this. So now here, I can get the listings and render those. And so now I can see, let's see, it gives us five. Looks like it did. It's kind of not scrolling very smoothly. So flash pan, yep, we got five of them. Okay, perfect. So now I don't want to just, you know, hard code this. I would like to uh, type some text up here and then have these uh, rendered. So what I'm going to do is just add a text input at the top here. So I'm going to say react.fragment. And the reason why I'm creating a fragment is I want to add something to the top. So I want to add a text input right here. And we're going to probably turn this into a whole formic form in the future, but I just want to test this out. So I wanted to put a text input here. Um, so I wanted to render both the text input and the scroll view side by side. I could also use just a view here if I wanted to. Um, and let's make this with 100% and the height 40. Uh, I think it's up here, it's hard to say. I'm also going to say uh, add a placeholder text. So placeholder is search dot dot dot. And I see it up here in the corner. Um, and so you'll notice uh, because of the phone I'm using, iPhone X, you actually can't see it. There's this thing called a safe um, area. I think it's safe area view maybe that we can render here. Safe area view. I forget how to use this, but uh, there we go. It looks like it worked. Uh, this is specific for uh, working with the iPhone X. So you see how there's this bar up here. It brings it down below so you can actually um, see what's going on there, or move it past the bar, I mean, and uh, basically add some margin to the top, I suppose. 
All right, so now my text here, I want to increase the font size of it a little bit. Font size, let's make it 20. And maybe I don't need a height on it. Let's see if it renders without a height, it does. Um, and so now what I want to do is I want to be able to type and then I want it to search that name. So what I'm going to do here is just add a state and I'm going to have name, which is going to be an empty string to start with. And then up here, I need to pass uh, or specify that I now have a state. So I'm going to create an interface for it. And the name is going to be a string. And then that's the second parameter that I pass into pure component. So the first is the, the type for the props, which is just an empty object. And the state is a, a name that's a string. All right, so now I'm just going to say on change text. And I'm going to take the text and I'm just going to say this dot set state name is equal to text. And then I'm going to set the value to this dot state dot name. And actually, why don't I destructure it because I might use it a couple times. And we'll pass that as the value here. So now if I type, let's make sure. Yep. So that's good. So it's updating the state now. And now that's what I want to pass down to my variables here. So now I'm going to say name to my variable. And the name is what we get from the state up here. So a name is what we're going to now search. So now as I type, you can see um, it, it kind of just queried down below. And you can see as I was typing, it changed. So I was searched for buzz, um, but I could do V, E, E. So I type a V and then E. And then E, and you can see as each letter I type, it researches um, and requeries uh, below. So now we have kind of a real time search. Um, this is not really, you could make a search like this. There's actually lots of places that do that. Um, so that's how you would approach this if you wanted to do that. Or in the next video, we're going to make this a little bit more advanced, probably add forming to it, and then add some pagination as well. So that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching.